These are the Papermate flare pens that you already know, the medium tip. But wait, flip it around, and this is not the Papermate flare that you know. It's a brush tip. What? Let's see how well it does for hand lettering and calligraphy. Hello, lettering friend. I'm Sarah. These are called Papermate Flare Dual. They come in 16 colors. They're pretty new, but I'll admit I'm late to the party. I hadn't heard about them until one of my subscribers commented about them. So thank you for looking out for me and being a fellow pen lover. It has the regular 0.7 millimeter tip on one side and a brush tip on the other side. To compare them to the original Papermate Flare pens, the medium tip is exactly the same, just without the brush tip. The lids are the same, except the original has the metal clip and the dual just has the hearts. They both have that soft, smooth feel. But the real question that we're all waiting on is how about that new brush tip? I like to start with the basic calligraphy strokes to get a feel for it. And at first it's feeling really good, but let's see if I can do really thick downstrokes. As you can see, it's doing really well. So here's the amount of contrast in the downstroke that I can get. But the thing that I want to see in a really good brush pen is its ability to bounce back and hold its shape even while being flexible. But I can tell already that this one isn't snapping back into its shape very well. I wouldn't go as far as calling it a floppy fish brush tip like some brush pens, but I definitely have other brush tips that do a better job. And after this first page of pressing really hard, I can already feel it wearing down slightly, which leads to a quicker fray. I am going to show you more details about this brush tip, but first I always like to start with swatches when I am testing out a new pen to see all the different colors and for these swatches I'm doing the fine tip and then the brush tip and the first thing I notice about these colors the orange one the pen looks really orange but the ink is more of a peachy coral and so I was not a fan that there is not a true orange in this whole set I love all the other colors and you see I'm writing less is more and I know the irony of this statement here but lately I really have just been feeling like I have decluttered a lot of my pens and yet I still keep collecting more pens and I need to declutter more because less really is more I'm able to create more when my mind is clear because I am not so cluttered with the amount of pens that I have. And, you know, I don't think this is everybody's experience, but for me, I definitely feel like I can create better when I have less options to choose from. And since I have these pens already without the brush tip, I was just thinking how it's kind of weird now I have these again with the brush tip. And I have more thoughts about that I will share with you in a minute, but take a look at these colors. I really like most of them. The purple is kind of a weird purple and the pink is definitely more like a coral and it looks pretty similar to the orange one. They're not exactly the colors I would go for, but then I needed to make a page in my journal to see how I would actually use them. So I'm starting with the words in black and let me talk again about this brush tip for lettering so the length of the brush tip is pretty long it's about the length of a Tombow dual brush pen maybe you've heard me talk about them in some of my past videos I don't use them very often because they're not my favorite brush pens to use it's something about that length and the amount of flexibility that it has that it kind of frays <laughs> pretty quickly and I mean it works great as a brush tip and you can get good lettering with it but I don't love the flexibility. Something about how it's not elastic enough, it's not snapping back as much as other brush pens. It's something about that that is not my favorite. It's not bad. Like I said, it's not a floppy fish brush pen. It's going to last a little bit longer, but it's not my number one recommendation for everybody to go out and get these for the brush tip. So if you already have Papermate flares that you use without the brush tip, then I would say you don't need to go out and replace all of them if you already have other brush pens. If it's time to replace your Papermate flares, then I would say definitely go ahead and try these ones because they are a lot of fun to have the Papermate flare and the brush tip right there together. It is convenient to have them in the same pen, but you don't need these just for the brush tip. So that's just my recommendation, but maybe you're like me and you just like trying new pens and that's okay too. 
It's a lot of fun. They were pretty easy for me to find. I saw them on Amazon and Walmart even. So that's another plus as well. For this quote, I chose the colors that I like the best and I think they're really pretty together. I didn't choose the red. I used the orange and it looks like that coral pink color and it is really pretty if it's not supposed to be an orange. And then I also didn't choose to use the purple just because it's not my favorite shade of purple but I really like the rest of these colors. They're really bright, vibrant, pretty colors together. And I kept this quote really simple because it's kind of the whole pushing back against perfectionism that I am still trying to overcome always. And I did different styles. So it's just the chunky lowercase print and then a bouncy script font. And here's a fun way to explore what your markers can do. So I went in with the fine tip and I just did a line down the center. I was doing it on the downstrokes and you can see the line. It's not very obvious. It's really subtle, but I like how it turned out. So because a brush tip is a little bit lighter as the ink spreads out, doing the fine tip on top adds a subtle little extra touch. And this wouldn't work with every brush pen, especially ones that are really inky and juicy or with darker colors but it works great with these ones. It's a fun way to use the brush tip and the fine tip in one piece. So then I went in with the stripes around it just to fill in the whole page. And I just used the gray. I love how it turned out. Maybe this shows you that you really can do an awesome quote with a very simple layout, simple lettering. And here is another very simple idea to use in your journal. This I'm doing the brush tip stripe and then the fine liner stripe. And this is a fun rainbow and a fun way to use both sides of your pen. I do love dual tip pens. So I know I talked before about how less is more and maybe don't get these pens, but I have really been enjoying using them. And I was thinking though that with so many pens, if everything is special, then nothing is special. And I really do have a lot of favorite pens or a lot that I really truly enjoy using. And it's okay for me to only use the ones that make me the most happy. Our creative time is too short to spend it on pens that we only like a little bit. If that means we're only using one type of pen forever, then that's great. And it's the one that really helps you feel creative and works the best with your style. And you can find that pen for you. And those are just my thoughts on the irony of less is more because I agree with that statement. And I also really enjoy trying new pens and reviewing them for you. But back to the pens, I can get a good variation in the sizes of my letters. So this word here flow is a lot smaller than my sunshine quote. So I do appreciate that. And this is my art journal of journal. It didn't bleed through. It is super nice paper, but because I think these are not very inky, it would probably not bleed through thinner paper as well. If you want to learn hand lettering with brush pens, check out this playlist right here. I'll see you there.